Good morning, folks. We've got even more from the sun heading our way. We'll get a couple climate and catastrophe articles today as well. Let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on the sun was not exactly a quiet one. We are going to be zooming in on the departing active region as it released its third CME in the overnight hours. Ejecta definitely pushed in Earth's direction, even though it is indeed another small one. But small ones can be relevant if the timing is right. So compare the coronal hole stream impact we saw yesterday of the density hump and then plasma speed increase with the CME impact from last night where there is a definitive jump in the telemetry all at the same time. This drove another minor geomagnetic storm event last night and into this morning. Don't forget we've still got more small CMEs on the way with a good chance of impact from one of them today. Good chance for low to moderate geomagnetic storms. We're going to start at a baseline setting for Venus. We need these to determine and analyze changes on the planets and the non-detection of lightning here sets that stage for any future changes in its electrodynamics, like we've seen with Venus winds as well. The Parker probe, the solar orbiter, and others are now poised to detect those changes whenever they get to our neighboring planet. Let's quickly jump to climate and then to catastrophe. The signs are happening now. First one here describes one of the scary anoxic concerns from the global warming crowd and how it is more of a nightmare from which they can awaken. It is the differential variability of ocean sectors already showing up that leads to concerns over ocean heat transport. This paper is a quantifier of the ongoing ice age triggers we've seen published numerous times the last few years in the realm of ocean currents, overturning circulation, and that very same heat transport. By the way, it may have taken nearly a decade for a major paper to come out and finally say in print that the global warming pause they identify really doesn't work in any reality with high climate sensitivity. But this has been a key aspect of the climate coverage for about three years now at this channel. Carbon, just not quite as powerful as they've believed. Heading in here for two remarks on that homework video watching I asked of you yesterday. First, excellent to see so many of you connecting our coverage of the magnetic changes affecting both ice loss and the polar offset. When those papers came out, I promised that they'd be blaming global warming, and they have. Many of you noticed this one on the Weather Channel. Just as long as you remember that the magnetic forcing is also playing a role in the ice that they think is pulling the nifty trick on its own, and all of those papers about the magnetic forcing of the polar offset. Also, for the shocking number of you who couldn't find it yesterday, the primary solar change paper we had shown was the preprint because you can read that one in full. And the Harvard Abstract page has the wrong link to this paper where it's actually published. That's why about 50 of you couldn't find the real published paper. Not your fault. But find it or not, it's real. And the chemical changes we expect to begin the downward spiral towards solar micronova have begun over the last few solar cycles as well. It's surreal, but real. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.